The hard drive is where all information is stored on the computer, be it the Windows operating system, programs you install, or files you download and create on your computer. Everything is stored on the hard drive. When selecting a hard drive to install into your computer, there are two basic features you need to consider. They are the capacity and the speed of the drive. The capacity or size of the hard drive is measured in gigabytes. One gigabyte is made up of 1000 megabytes. To give you an example of how much you can fit onto one gigabyte of hard drive space, take an MP3 audio file. The average MP3 audio file takes up 5 megabytes. Divide 1000 by 5 and you get 200. So one gigabyte of hard drive space can store 200 MP3 music files. The size of the drive you choose is up to you. Generally you should buy the biggest drive you can afford. A drive with at least 300 gigabytes of space is a good minimum. The speed of the hard drive is determined by the rotation speed of the disk inside the hard drive and the amount of memory cache included in the drive. The rotation speed is measured in RPMs or rotations per minute. The average hard drive spends between 52 and 5400 rotations per minute. Faster hard drives spend between 7200 and 10,000 RPMs. The rotation speed is important because the faster the drive rotates, the more quickly data can be written to and read from the hard drive. 10,000 RPM drives are rare, expensive, and the capacities are limited. We recommend buying a 7200 RPM drive. The memory cache helps to speed up the accessing of information on the drive, and the more of it the better. When purchasing a hard drive, 16 megabytes of cache is recommended. The hard drive connects to the computer through the hard drive controller on the motherboard. The most common hard drive controller is called Serial ATA, or SATA, sometimes pronounced SATA. A SATA controller speed is measured in megabytes or MB per second. The original form of SATA had a speed of 150 megabytes per second. SATA2 controllers, which are found on most motherboards today, have a speed of 300 megabytes per second. Also, SATA2 introduced a few new features. The most important is called native command queuing, or NCQ, which speeds up the access of data a little bit more. The next version of SATA will be called SATA3 and will run at 600 megabytes per second and will probably also include a few new features. To get the speed and features of SATA, whatever the version, both the motherboard and hard drive itself have to support the same version of SATA. An older hard drive controller type, IDE, sometimes called ATA, with speeds that topped out at 133 megabytes per second, is being phased out and will become less available on future motherboards. For this reason, we recommend buying an SATA2 hard drive for your new computer. Check the specifications on the motherboard before purchasing for SATA2 support. See the motherboard component lesson or the installation lessons for more on motherboards. There's also a new feature on most new motherboards called RAID. RAID allows you to connect two or more hard drives together so they show up as one drive in Windows. There are three types of RAID arrays, RAID 0, 1, and 5. RAID 0, sometimes called striping, spreads the data across two or more hard drives. This gives you around a 15% increase in performance. The downside of RAID 0 is that if just one of the hard drives in the RAID 0 array fails, you will lose all your data, even on the hard drives that are still working, because a portion of your data was on the drive that is now dead. If you use RAID 0, make sure you have your important data backed up off the RAID array. RAID 1, sometimes referred to as mirroring, uses two hard drives and keeps the same data on both drives. This gives you a built-in backup at all times and gives you around a 15 to 50 percent increase in reading data from the drives. The downside to this is that you're using two hard drives and only getting the space of one. So if you have two 250 gigabyte drives, you're only getting 250 gigabytes of hard drive space. RAID 5 combines the striping of data in RAID 0 with the built-in backup of RAID 1. 
three or more hard drives in a RAID 5 array keeps the usable data on two-thirds of the drive's combined space with one-third of the drive space used as the redundant or parity data. If one of the hard drives dies, it can be replaced with a new drive and the remaining data on the other two drives is used to recreate the missing data and get the RAID 5 array back to a fully working state with no data loss. The performance increase over single drives is between 15 to 25 percent. There are also hard drives that connect to the outside of the computer called external hard drives. They have their own power supply separate from the computer and connect through either Firewire or USB 2.0 external interfaces which is useful if you need to take large amounts of data with you on the go. So when you go to purchase your hard drive or drives you're looking for at least 300 gigabytes of drive capacity at least a 7200 RPM speed with 16 megabytes of cache serial ATA2 support and if you want to try using RAID look for your type of RAID support 0, 1, or 5 on the motherboard. This is a good time to talk about floppy drives. Though you won't often have a use for a floppy drive in your computer, when you go to install Windows XP on your computer, you'll need a floppy drive to load the drivers for the SATA2 controller on the motherboard so that Windows will see it during setup. If you're installing Windows Vista, you don't have to worry about this, but a floppy drive is still a good idea. In installation lessons, we'll go over how to configure and install your hard drive or drives and a floppy drive in your computer.